BRE, enterococcus germs that vancomycin do not kill are called vancomycin resistant enterococci, or VRE. Most VRE infections occur in the hospital. It primarily resides in the human digestive system and in the female genital tract. The enterococci make up a significant part of the normal bacterial population of these sites in healthy people. In 1984, enterococci was given its own genus identity. In 1986, the first VRE strands appeared in Europe, and in 1989, the first case of VRE was reported in the USA. Between 1989 and 1993, the percentage of enterococcal tests that were positive for VRE in the USA rose from 0.3% to almost 8%. Vancomycin is an antibiotic that is used to treat some drug-resistant infections caused by enterococci. In some instances, enterococci have become resistant to this drug and thus are called vancomycin-resistant enterococci, VRE. Found in 1953, the drug was then approved by the FDA in 1958 to treat penicillin-resistant staphylococci. Vancomycin can come in a few different forms. These are just some examples. Even though VRE can live in the human intestines and female genital tract without causing disease, this is called colonization, it may sometimes cause infections of the urinary tract, the bloodstream, or wounds associated with catheters or surgical procedures. There are two types of VRE. The first type is intrinsic resistance. Isolates of enterococcus gallinarum and E. castleiflavus E. flavonescence demonstrates an inherent low-level resistance to vancomycin. The second type of vancomycin resistance in enterococci is acquired resistance. Enterococci can become resistant to vancomycin by acquisition of genetic information from another organism. Most commonly, this resistance is seen in E. facium and E. facialis, but also in these others listed below. People who are more likely to get VRE are of the following. People who have been previously treated with the antibiotic vanomycin or other antibiotics for long periods of time. People who are hospitalized, particularly when they receive antibiotic treatment for long periods of time. And people who are colonized with VRE. Also, people with weakened immune systems such as patients in intensive care units or in cancer or transplant wards. People who have undergone surgical procedures such as abdominal or chest surgery 
and people with medical devices that stay in for some time, such as urinary catheters or central IV catheters. VRE is often passed from person to person by the contaminated hands of caregivers. VRE can get onto a caregiver's hands after they have contact with other people with VRE or after contact with contaminated surfaces. VRE can also spread directly to people after they touch surfaces that are contaminated with VRE. VRE is not spread through the air by coughing or sneezing. Virtually the only people who develop illness from enterococcus are those who are already ill, such as individuals in a hospital ICU or those who are elderly, have diabetes, have chronic kidney failure, and so forth. So unlike other forms of resistant bacteria, there is little chance or concern among physicians of enterococcus becoming an epidemic in healthy communities. Always wash your hands thoroughly after using the bathroom and before preparing food. Clean your hands after close contact with persons who have VRE. Wash with soap and water or clean with alcohol-based hand cleaner. Prevention continued. Frequently clean areas of your home, such as the bathroom, which may become contaminated with VRE. Use household disinfectant if possible. Wear gloves if you come in contact with body fluids that may contain VRE such as stool. Always wash your hands after removing gloves. Be sure to tell any healthcare providers that you have VRE so they are aware of your infection. VRE infections tend to occur in more debilitated or seriously ill hospitalized patients. Mortality rates in patients with VRE bacteremia may reach 60 to 70 percent. Approximately half of these deaths may be attributable directly to the infection. Studies have found VRE infection to be a strong predictor of mortality in liver transplant patients. Patients with neutropenia, chronic renal failure, or other serious conditions and liver transplant recipients seem to be the most likely to experience prolonged bacteremia or to die as a result of VRE.
we've recognized it and diagnosed it. Now what the heck do we do with it? Over the next couple of seconds, we'll just look at the different treatment options here for VRE. Vancomycin. As the name implies, the enterococci can resist vancomycin and medications with the same action. These medications work by interfering with the bacteria's ability to build the cell walls. So by breaking down the cell walls, it prevents the cells themselves from being able to multiply and divide. Vancomycin is very commonly used, which has led to this problem, and even till today, they prefer to use vancomycin over a lot of other medications. Linozolid is a synthetic antibiotic, meaning that it doesn't come naturally. They have to create compounds together in a laboratory to put it together. The class is oxazolidnones. The brand name that you'll see out there is Zyvox. Method of action, so it works by preventing the bacteria from synthesizing the proteins at the RNA site, which means that these guys can't reproduce. They can't give their data off to the next thing. So how do we give this medication? Typically in a hospital setting, it'll go by IV dose, which is 600 milligrams every 12 hours. Once the patient goes home, that'll be 600 milligrams every 12 hours for a 10 to 14 day period. Show me the money. The average cost that they found of a 10 day treatment for linezolid is roughly one thousand dollars. So quinupristin and dalfopristin are two different medications that are given together for the treatment. They act on each other. So they're again a synthetic antibiotic. This time they're streptogram and under their class. Their brand name is Synersid is what you'll typically see that out there. So the quinupristin prevents the bacteria from releasing complete chains of the RNA. So the bacteria again can't pass on their genetic information to the new ones. Dalfopristin actually enhances quinupristin's action while preventing those polypeptide chains from linking up, again dealing with passing on the information to the other generations. So how do we give these two medications? Typically they come in a dry powder form. Both the medications are mixed together. So what they want you to do is put it in a bag of D5W, which is 5% dextrose in a water solution. You see this mainly when you're giving infusions um, and drips for patients in the hospital period. So they'll put the, the stuff in the fluid and we'll let it run in over a 60 minute period. So for a 10-day treatment with this stuff, you're looking at approximately $3,100, keeping in mind that the last medication before this we talked about was only $1,000. All right, so for daptomycin, they make it by fermenting something called Streptomyces roseoporus, which is another bacteria. It creates what they call a lipopeptide. So you see the brand name under that for cubicin. How this works is that the medication daptomycin actually injects itself into the bacteria. It causes everything to depolarize, which kills the RNA, the DNA, and the protein synthesis. Difference between this medication and the other one is that this one actively kills the bacteria when it goes in versus the other ones who just prevent it from growing and spreading itself to other bacteria. So for the administration of daptomycin, this is a weight-based medication. So rather than just taking a standard dose, we're looking again at the patient's total kilograms. 
not ideal body weight, but they, what they actually weigh. We'll put this in some saline. We'll give it to them once. It's an injection over a 24-hour period every two to six weeks. So for cost of treatment on this one, we have to look at what the weight base is versus just saying this standard dose. So they looked at a 70 kilogram, which they're saying is a standard size patient, 154 pounds probably isn't standard much anymore. But for 14 days, that's $1,191. All right, so what seems like a better idea? Do you want to kill the bacteria right then and there, or do you just want to stop it from reproducing and help the others die off? Well, you would think, oh, adaptomycin, sure, that's going to be the best choice. However, when they studied the medication versus the other ones that we covered earlier, they found that daptomycin actually had a higher mortality rate. More patients died that got this medication than getting the other two.